sphericals there, lateral line. You can see a hint of the lateral line running right down here along the side of the body. And then if we look real closely, we might be able to see some of it on the head, but probably not because it's fairly squished and it's hard to tell what's the lateral line and what's a wrinkle. But at least here on the side of the body, you can see that lateral line very clearly. And again, that's lined with all sorts of pressure sensitive cells. So this is how sharks go when something's swimming around near them. Um, anterior dorsal fin is the standard dorsal fin when you think of a shark's dorsal fin cutting through the water. Of course, anterior towards the head, dorsal on the back. So this is the anterior dorsal fin. This back here then is the posterior dorsal fin. Manage this slice off pretty well, but that's the posterior dorsal fin. And dorsal on the back, posterior towards the tail. Um, the caudal fin is the tail fin. So it's a two-part caudal fin. You can see it's asymmetrical, uh, and that's so when they um, swing the tail back and forth very heavily, that gives more force on the upper side than on the lower side. It has a tendency to drive the nose down, so they then use their pectoral fins to counterbalance that. Um, and so uh, they maintain their position in the water, but the caudal fin basically is the tail fin. Um, the eye is, of course, the eye. Um, gill slits are then what we tend to think of when you see the side of the shark's body. You've got all the nice little gill slits. Uh, opening up on the side of the body. Um, pectoral fins, the two big ones, what we would think of as the arms, are the two pectoral fins. The pelvic fins, turns out this species of shark doesn't have pelvic fins, but what we do have are the anal fins. So these little triangular fins at the back here are the anal fins. And this little tubular portion that comes off, these are called the claspers. Uh, this identifies this shark as a male. Um, sharks, unlike most bony fish, have external fertilization. So the female simply releases her eggs into the water. The, swim, the male then swims over them, releases the sperm onto the eggs. Sharks have internal fertilization, um, but they don't have a penis. So in order for the male to transport the sperm directly into the female's body, he kind of swims up behind her, wraps his tail around her, they then push the cloaca directly to each other. He transmits the sperm into her body. The claspers are what allows him to hold on to her during this process uh, to make sure that the sperm's actually into the female's body properly. So, and so female females will have, um, they'll have something that kind of looks like that, but it's much, much smaller because uh, it's not functional in females. Um, the male claspers are very much enlarged so that you uh, are able to grab onto the female. It's got to have traction. Got to have traction. <laughs> so, that are all the exterior structures. Now, to get to the interior structures, open this bad boy up. Now the shark <clears throat> is very oily and greasy right now because since they don't have a swim bladder, one of the ways that they try to provide themselves some buoyancy is they store a oil in their liver called squalene because oils being lipids tend to be less dense than water and so by filling your liver up with squalene it provides buoyancy. The other good thing about squalene is that it's less dense than water, so it also provides buoyancy. Or, uh, I, I just said that, I repeated myself. It, it's a lipid, so it's very energy rich, so it provides uh, an energy supply. So by filling their liver up with squalene, not only does it provide buoyancy, but it also provides energy reserves. And sometimes whenever you catch sharks, they have, they excrete like a really smelly, kind of oily. That's it. Is that it? Okay. That's it. What we're gonna try to do here just remove this whole side of his body. <laughs> wow. 
once we get through the cartilage of the gills, it becomes a lot easier. There we go. Yeah, if you can just all this, yeah, that's all the oil. Okay, so the first most obvious structure, which is extremely large in three major lobes, this is its liver. Dang. Um, so, very large liver. In fact, in most animals, the liver is one of the largest organs inside the body cavity. Um, so that's the liver. This little tiny thing up here, that's the heart. So tiny. Yes, it is. So that's the heart. Fish only have a two-chambered heart. It has a single atrium and a single ventricle. They then have a little chamber on one of the blood vessels. Um, I think it's called the sinus venosum or something like that, um, which provides a little bit of extra pumping action. But really, it's a two-chamber heart. Up in here, then, all this gray, fluffy material, those are the actual gills themselves. So all of this here, those are the actual gills doing the gas exchange. Okay, so I'll kind of just fold this up out of the way. Running from the mouth down to here will be the esophagus, which you can't really see. This structure right here then is the stomach. Can you see? Right here. Um, it, it's not so good here. If you look at the pre prepared shark, you see it much better. It then takes a big J hook and that J-hook then is the ileum, which is part of the intestine, and then all of this running down is intestine too. So the stomach up high, the J-hook, and this long portion is all intestine or ileum. This darker gray piece here is the spleen. Now on either side here, and this one, they're not real well developed. Kind of lift this piece up right here. And like I said, there's a matching one on the other side that's not as obvious. Mm -hmm. That is the testes. Mm. So, pair of testes on either side. Now for the kidneys, if you look running down the center of the animal here, this is his backbone. And again, it's hard to see depending on how the light's glaring, what your particular angle of attack is. But running on either side of the backbone as a very flat strip, it kind of has a darkish grayish color. You can see it underneath this membrane. Um, those are the kidneys. So it's not a, a nice, um, obvious, you know, distinct, distinct structure like what we think of. But running down on either side of the backbone, pressed tightly up against the dorsal body wall, are the kidneys. If you then look again, the kidneys are kind of the darker structure. But on top of the kidneys, there's this lighter, kind of squiggly line. That's the sperm duct. Because as the sperm is produced in the testes, it has to then be able to travel all the way to the cloaca. Uh, and so the squiggly line laying on top of the kidney, and again, one on either side, uh, is the sperm duct. Down here, this little gray pointed structure here, this is the rectal gland. And that's about it for, you know, unless we cut into the brain and start looking at all that, which we uh, don't really need to. Th this is the internal anatomy of a shark. So, again, heart up here, gills, four or five pairs of gills on either side, heart, lots of liver, testes, stomach up high, the J turn, which again, look at the prepared shark, it shows up much better. The sharp J turn and this long structure here then is the intestine, spleen, 
kidneys and sperm ducts pretty much packaged together right on either side of the backbone and rectal gland. How, how do you distinguish the testes? It's this, again, it's, it's, a, it's a distinct structure. I just have to cut the membrane that's holding it down. But this distinct whitish structure, um, it's on the flip open the picture. So it would be on either side of the stomach? Yes, there's one on either side. Yeah, I'll see if they got a better picture. They don't really have it labeled, do they? Mm -mm. Flip one back. I think they have it labeled up here. What's number seven on this one? Gastrocenic artery, and esophagus. Esophagus. Number six here is testes. Now they've injected theirs with colored uh, latex, and so it's all testes. But you can see the testes on that chart fairly easy, can't you? Yes. Yeah. Look, look on that chart. But th this is it right here. Since this is the chart, you know, either one of these would show up on the uh, on the lab practical. Like I said, on that one, it's very easy to distinguish. On this chart, this is the testes right here.